Greetings and blessings to you, your family and your church. Now in this video you will get a new insight, enhance the understanding and perspectives about Jesus' life and mission. Also the true reason why Judas betrayed Jesus you will hear. I learned this a new understanding and insight about God's providence from the teachings of Father Moon. It made my relationship to Jesus Christ deeper and more personal. Father Moon was only 16 years old as he had a direct spiritual and life-changing encounter with Jesus in an Easter night prayer with deep meditation he had this moving experience. There Father Moon got chosen, ordinated and consecrated to continue Jesus' mission on earth. Today I present in short the new perspectives and insights which I gain through study, deep prayer and reflections. Feel free to leave your comment in the comment section. Thank you. In Amos 3.7 it says, Surely the Sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing His plan. So if we pray and concentrate on the, our relationship to God, we will find out about God's plan. As he says, to his servants and prophets, God reveals his plans. World restoration means for God uh, to restore to the original Garden of Eden. This means God will send a person on earth who restores the failure of the first Adam and then a person to restore the failure of the first Eve to recreate the original couple and family. That's why Jesus is called the second Adam. Jesus became the fulfilled second Adam. The center of the human hope is to find happiness and purpose in God's creation. This means God will send a person on earth who will restore the failure of the first Adam and then a person to restore the failure of the first Eve and create the original couple and family. That's why Jesus is called the second Adam. Jesus became the fulfilled second Adam. The center of the human hope is to find true happiness in God's creation. In Romans 5.19 we can Understand. For just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of one man will be made righteous. To fulfill the hopes of God and his sons and daughters on earth, God gave the three blessings. In Genesis 1.28 we can read, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over everything and all living creatures that moves in the ground. God's scent of hope is the same and origin of our human hope. God's hope is that uh, restored Adam and Eve can make his original plan and ideal of creation complete. This starts with one man on earth. In 1 Corinthians 15, 45, 49 it says, So it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam a life-giving spirit. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all we die, so in Christ we will made alive. This foundation from the individual Jesus to a family, Jesus should have married to restore Adam's family. To the tribe, tribes of Israel, all the tribes should have followed Jesus. And from the nation of Israel, it would have gone this foundation to the Roman Empire as the larger entity. As we will see, family, tribe and national support that is required for Jesus and was very real. Building and maintaining this is a, a human being's responsibility is very essential and was often delayed. Then God sets up similar 
circumstances in a later time. Fallen people have the chance to put right what was done wrong in the past. This goes also true for the worldwide level. The world God wants to save is the whole world, not just part of the world. In John 3.16 we can read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Remember, God's central history is Judaism, the Jewish people and nation. Two very important principles must be remembered. In the Jewish understanding, the Messiah, Mashiach, is only to come once. Jews as a nation did not recognize Jesus as the expected Messiah and they still do not recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus today are still waiting for the Messiah to come because they know before Christ Elijah has to come. John the Baptist had the mission of Elijah but did not fulfill it because he denied it publicly. The concept of a savior, a Messiah is given to the Jews from the Greek tradition on the or the most favored expression of son of man son of man is common used in romans 5 19 for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by one man's righteousness many will be made righteous because the fall was man's fault man we, this means we have to restore it. Not It is not God's responsibility. The Messiah is a completed person showing God as the Son of God. He is the fulfilled, completed human person, the second Adam. He is not God, the Creator, but God on a personal level and through his godly, loving character he can show us directly God himself. In 1 Corinthians 15, 22, 23 For as by one man came death, so by a man has to come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all made be alive. Hallelujah! Salvation needs active cooperation. A decision for God and Christ, faith, devotion, attendance and action. In Isaiah 9, 6-7, we can read, For us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and his peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David, and all over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time and forever. The seal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The Messiah comes to bring salvation to the individual, family, society, nation and world to be a light. He comes to set the captives free, to release people from Satan's sovereignty into the freedom of the sovereignty of God. To restore the fall of man means to destroy Satan's sovereignty. In Matthew 4, 17, we can read, From that time on Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Matthew 6, 10 says in the Lord's Prayer, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 3, 1-2 explains, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Amen. So it was God's original will for the Jewish people to accept Jesus and for him to become the Lord of glory, as it says in Isaiah 9. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. And the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. 
but in the future he will honor Galilee for the nations and for the way of the sea beyond Jordan. To come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Isaiah 60 again says this kind of glorious predictions. Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and the glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings brightness of your dawn. In Luke 1, 31, 33, we can understand, You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never amen establishing the kingdom of heaven on earth but there is are also other prophecies in the bible if jesus was rejected it was god's will for him to go the way of the cross the israelites believed and followed god's will and their prophets then israel was pre protected because god cannot protect if people don't believe and follow so the lord of suffering came the cross because of the disbelief of the people and the prophecies in Isaiah 53 became true. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Jesus' own words what God and Jesus expect from Israel and the Jewish people. In John 6, 28 to 29. Then they asked him, What must we do the work God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in him, the one he has sent. Jesus said this very, very clearly. In Matthew 9, 13, we can also see, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Sacrifice becomes necessary when there is no mercy. God is reaching out to the people, the sinners and fallen people, through Christ to be saved, like in 1 Timothy 2, 5-6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people, this has now been witnessed at the proper time. A mediator is necessary in the sense that means one person who is totally united with God in him, God's spirit is dwelling. In John 14, 6-7, we can understand, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. We can relate to and have a physical example, a person to fulfill those three great blessings. This means this requires a physical person, a new Adam. The connection and way of life with Satan has to be cut off and separated. In John 3, 8, we can understand that the one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. To realize, to live a Christ-like life and cut off the, a sinful, egoistic way of life, deny, deny 
deny Satan's way of life and follow the Messiah. Deny Satan's way of life and follow the Messiah. Leave the dead to bury the dead. Complete unconditional self-denial and sacrifice. To prepare the people of Israel, God sent John the Baptist as the second coming of Elijah. Check out the video about the real mission of John the Baptist. So John the Baptist as the second coming of Malachi in Luke 176 we can read and you child will be called the prophet of the most high for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. John's father Zachariah the high priest prophesied that John would be the one to prepare the way for the Messiah. Prepare the way for what for Christ to be accepted. John's mission was not to prepare the people and then to reject the Messiah Jesus Messiah Jesus and allow that Jesus is killed. This was not not the mission of John. John's mission was to lead people to Christ and follow him. As it says in Luke, John's mission is to bear witness to Jesus Christ that all might believe in him. It would have been quite easy because John was very accepted and respected. John 1, 6-8 There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. In Matthew 17, 11, 13, it says, Jesus replied, to be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, Jesus says. And they did not recognize him, but have done with him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. From Jesus' words, we can understand that John did not fulfill his mission, and Jesus had to take over and restore his mission. Finding disciples on his own, preaching and winning the scribes and Pharisees and leaders of Israel was one part of John's mission which had now uh, Jesus to fulfill. In Matthew 11.11 11, it says, Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has no one reason greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. A very dramatic judgment on John uh, by Jesus. He fasted 40 days and the three te temptations uh, of the devil came because John did not follow or work with Jesus. Satan could attack Jesus in the position of John the Baptist. But Jesus took responsibility for John's failure and restored his mission by fasting and overcoming the Satan's uh, temptations. Jesus is left in a vulnerable position and cut off from all people in Israel. With his acceptance by the Jewish people, Jesus would have united with other religious groups in the East that were waiting to the Savior too, and finally convert and transform the people um, to of the Roman Empire. Not only Jesus lost John, but also the Jewish people, and especially the scribes and Pharisees, didn't accept Jesus because they knew that before Christ comes, Elijah comes, and has to come as promised in the book of Malachi in the Old Testament. So the Galilean spring started by Jesus preaching. And Jesus, he went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every infirmity among the people. Jesus burst into the scene and galvanized the people as shown in Rembrandt's 100 Gilder print, as you can see. The ordinary people were attracted to Jesus, but the high priests, scribes and Pharisees 
were more and more against Jesus. So this uh, Galilean spring was one part for the common people. In Matthew 4.25 it says, And great crowds followed him from Galilee and Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. The ordinary people were attracted to Jesus. Children are brought to Jesus, as we can see in this picture of Rembrandt. The Sermon on the Mount is another example how Jesus gathers crowds of people. In Matthew 7, 28-29, it says, And when Jesus finished the sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teachings, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. The constitution of the kingdom of God, the Sermon on the Mount, was given. The popularity that Jesus had soon led to jealousy from the traditional religious leaders. They did not accept Jesus because they were still waiting for Elijah to come. So Jesus had to perform miracles and his popularity among ordinary people was very uh, growing fast. Some of the religious leaders who attended Jesus' meeting to listen to him became increasingly skeptical and critical of his teachings and actions. When he said to the cripple lower through the roof, your sins are forgiven, the people were shocked, especially the scribes and Pharisees, as they believed that only God has the authority to forgive sins. So this was blasphemy for the scribes and Pharisees. Jesus did miracles as a way to prove to the skeptical religious leaders that he had authority from God for what he was saying and doing. So if John had followed Jesus, Jesus would not have had to do these miracles, performing this kind of extraordinary tasks. In Matthew 9, 6, it says, that you might know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralyzed man, rise, take up your bed and go home. The Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus is discussing the next steps to take the, in the providence. To go the way of the spiritual salvation by Jesus sacrificing himself on the cross. In Matthew 17, 1, we can read, After six days Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Amazing. And behold, there appeared to them Jesus, to uh, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make uh, three tents here for you, and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. The same words what John had heard when he baptized Jesus. And when the disciples heard this, they fell to their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them and saying, Rise! And when they lifted up, they saw no one but Jesus only. Amazing! Hallelujah! Peter and the disciples obviously didn't understand that they saw the spirit bodies of Elijah, Moses and Jesus. And this was a most dramatic situation. They got the same revelation as John the Baptist did. They should have united in heart and spirit with Jesus. And if they didn't understand anything, they should have asked Jesus and really asked some deeper explanation. So a change of course, which Peter and Judas does not agree with, started. In Matthew 16, 21, it says, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to the Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day he will rise again. Peter took him and said, Don't, this shall never happen to you. This was like really not agreeing with Jesus. Jesus realizes that with John dead and the growing hostility from the religious leaders is so strong and there is a 
possibility that he will be rejected and, and put to death. Peter is shocked because this is a real change in Jesus' te teaching from the optimistic message and hopeful message of the imminent and the very soon coming of the kingdom of God to a suffering cause. How is that possible? Peter was thinking surely when the trying to really understand this change of course. In Matthew 26, 47, 56, we can see the situation and read about it, that Judas kissed Jesus to identify to the people who were sent by the leading priests and elders of the people. Jesus didn't resist because he decided himself to go this way. He could have run away, but no, he decided to go this way. Because of the disbelief of the disciples and all people in Israel, who could not, uh, these disciples could not stay awake when he asked them to pray with him in the Garden of Gethsemane. The scripture which foretells the suffering of Jesus in Isaiah 53 was to be fulfilled. And the glorious Messiah prophecy in Isaiah 9:6 was not fulfilled because of the disbelief of the people and disciples. Why Jesus betrayed Jesus? Was it money or was Judas disappointed because Jesus said he is going to suffer and die and not bringing political freedom from the Romans? Maybe some of them may be possible through reasons. But the most powerful reason was revealed by Father Moon. Jesus as the second Adam has to restore the second Eve by taking a woman Eve away from Satan's side. Satan has to give away Eve voluntarily in order to restore the fall of man. This prepared woman to be the restored Eve and future bride of Jesus was Mary Magdalene, who was the fiancé of Judas. They were engaged. So Judas was opposing this idea of giving his fiancé to Jesus voluntarily. Magdalene, as a de devoted uh, disciple of Jesus, would have accepted this important mission. But Judas was absolutely against it. Remember, Jesus came to bring complete salvation on earth. This would meant that all people would accept it. And Jesus' prayer would have been realized in his lifetime. The kingdom of heaven would have been established. There would be no need for a second coming. In Matthew 6.10, we can read, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So the salvation victory through the cross. Romans 8.32 He who did not spare his own son, but give him for us all, will not also give us all things with him. Graciously give us all things. The most dedicated disciple of, of Jesus realized that he is not fully saved, gained spiritual salvation through believing uh, Jesus and his victory of the cross. In Romans 7, 21 to 25, we can read, Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of days? St. Paul, as a saved Christian, is talking. This is the reason for the need of a second coming, a return of Christ to establish physical salvation on earth. This new understanding is to prepare for the amazing works of transformation through the return of Christ. Christianity is the foundation for the second coming as Judaism was for Jesus. We must not make the same mistakes as at the time of Jesus. Jesus offered himself up as a sacrifice. He ransomed himself to that we could be saved. Because of this, Satan was able to claim Jesus' body, but not the soul of Jesus. So although he could not bring physical salvation, Jesus was able to bring spiritual salvation, the tremendous grace that no religious founder could bring, the forgiveness of sin and reconciliation with God. Satan thought that by crucifying Jesus, he had won. But Jesus never left his position as the Son of God. He did not run away. He did not curse his persecutors. Instead, he showed absolute unconditional love. So Satan could not accuse him. 
Even Satan had to bow down to Jesus and release people who call on Jesus' name. Jesus conquered death. He went to hell and liberated those drowned in the flood at the time of Moses and people who died long time ago and were in hell. So by his death, Jesus could redeem people's spirits from Satan, but the body continues to be dominated by Satan. So Jesus said, the world hates me, but uh, we have to understand why. Of course, Jesus' words of truth did not go down very well, and the religious leaders came to hate him and sought to destroy him. Panto Creator means that Christ is the ruler of all like on this icon is displayed. John 7, 7 The world hates me because I testify to it that its works are evil. Satan was the one who wanted to kill Jesus because he knew Jesus was a threat to his rule. After Jesus overcame Satan's temptations, he was looking for other ways to get him. Jesus was betrayed by one of his closest friends and disciples with a kiss. Jesus arrested by Roman soldiers and people sent by the high priests, we can see on this painting. In John 18, 3, So Jesus came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns and weapons. In John 18, 12, we can understand that uh, then the detachment of soldiers with its commanders and Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest uh, in that year. So this, the trials of Jesus was very severe. Jesus was let down by nearly everyone. The prophecies in Isaiah of the Lord of Suffering came to be true. Jesus was accused, but he never defended himself. And uh, many things were not practiced in the right way, and the law was twisted. Many disciples ran away and did not understand. Peter denied Jesus, and Jesus got an unfair and biased trial by the Sanhedrin. At night it was not allowed to take prisoners, so no proper procedure, process, no valid charges was put against Jesus. They tried to frame him, set him up. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Jesus was a perfect sacrifice and he made himself to this uh, unconditional offering. But remember, God desires mercy, not sacrifice. His suffering became the condition for the salvation of humanity. Hebrews 9.14 How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God. Jesus must have been in such pain. On Palm Sunday, the people were shouting, Hosanna! Five days later, the same people were mocking him. Yet despite this, never changed his heart or attitude. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. In Matthew 27, 39 to 40, we can read, And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads, saying, You would destroy the temple and build it up in three days. Now save yourself. Oh, what, just, what a sad situation. Satan was fixed on killing one man, Jesus Christ, even though he might have to hand back all humanity, including the Jewish people, to God. In Mark 15, 34, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? On the cross, Jesus restored the foundation of faith and substance. He kept faith in God even though he felt abandoned by God and love and he loved his enemies. But exactly this was the condition for Jesus to be resurrected. Even he was despised, he never changed his mind and love for God. Despite being mocked, Jesus never left the position of being the Son of God. He did not curse the people for rejecting and crucifying him. Instead, he practiced what he preached and asked God, forgive them. They don't know what they do. He laughed and gave his life for his enemies. Satan could not accuse Jesus. Satan had done his utmost to destroy and break Jesus 
but had been uns unsuccessful. Satan had tempted and dominated Adam, but he could not tempt Jesus, the second Adam. Even on the cross, Jesus continued to love, even when he did not feel God's presence. Jesus still kept faith, even though things did not turn out how he expected. Jesus continued to love and trust God. Satan had to put, bow down and acknowledge that Jesus was greater than he was. So Satan had to release anyone who believed in Jesus. In Luke 23, 34, we can read, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. In Luke 23, 46, we can read, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. In Psalm 22, he was abandoned by God, but he did not lose faith on curse God. He said, Father, into my hands I commit my spirit. Satan thought by killing the Messiah, he would destroy the entire providence of God. But Jesus was victorious. Satan nor death could hold Jesus. In 1 Peter 3, 19-20, Jesus went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times had not obeyed when God waited patiently in the days of Noah. Because Jesus kept his position of the Son of God, Satan could not keep him. Jesus was victorious over death. He resurrected and during 40 days after his death on the cross, Jesus revived the faith and spirits of his disciples. He established a church, the body of Christ, against which the gates of hell cannot prevail. God handed over Jesus to Satan as the condition of indemnity to save all mankind. In compensation for Satan's exercise of his maximum power in killing Jesus, God exercised his maximum power and resurrected Jesus. Hallelujah. In Luke 24, 21, But we hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. The disciples were in shock. They did not expect Jesus to be rejected and put to death. Jesus in his love did not accuse them. He had accepted what had happened as the will of God and explained it to his disciples in, in that way. Through this he restored the spirits and their faith. In Luke 24, 26, Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter in his glory? Jesus sends the Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Holy Spirit become spiritual through parents and bring spiritual rebirth. Spiritual salvation is to enter the realm where Satan cannot invade. In Acts 2, 1-3, When the day of Pentecost came, they all were together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. They came and separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Remember, Jesus came to bring complete salvation. This is what we, he could have brought if he had been accepted. Jesus' Lord's prayer would have been realized in Jesus' lifetime. The kingdom of God should have been established on earth. There would be no need for a second coming. So in our next topic and video, we will talk about resurrection, what really happened. Thank you for your attention and God bless you all.